Well, Majority Chief Wave of Parliament has said House Leader Alban Bagbin is recovering very well after he fell unconscious on Thursday. Bagbin was admitted at a 37 military hospital after, after he felt lightheaded when he complained. Uh, well, during a joint caucus meeting at the Accra International Conference Center, he joined me over the telephone, uh, Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak, that is over the telephone for some more on this. Yeah, welcome to the program, Mohammed. Thank you very much. Uh, do we know what may have caused this lightheadedness? Well, uh, I don't know who gave you that in, uh, description of what you are calling. What we knew was that yesterday uh, was a very marathon day for mm. us. We started very early uh, the house, especially those of us in the leadership. And uh, I want to believe by 7.30 the leader was there because I joined him around 8.15. But then we had a very long uh, activity running. We went into a committee, joint committee of the whole, which was around uh, 12 o'clock. That ran up to almost 2 o'clock. Then after the meeting, you he addressed us. I mean, says there was nothing wrong with him. Then he started feeling very dizzy, and we were lucky. Some of our police who were uh, medical officers, the like of uh, Honorable Atupoku Prempe, noticed that he was uh, sweating, and they believed that it was not too well with him. So we rushed him to the 37 hospital. Uh, he was mm. examined. He was uh, taken care of. He had some medication. They ran all the tests. There's nothing wrong with him. And we all, I mean, including himself, we knew that one of the major problems was that he didn't take time yesterday throughout the day mm. to, to pick a meal. I so see. it was like he was just running out of energy. Mm. But I can tell you now he's very fine. He just left my office here. We went together this morning. For us, for him to reassure everybody that he's fine, he passed briefly in office and uh, I just uh, saw him up for him to sit in the I was insisting that uh, I believe he should go and take a rest but he was in the office for well over an hour and many people can attest to this. Uh, the majority were fine and speaking and uh, we pray that all of us learn a lesson from that that we should find time not to only rest but to also take our meals seriously. At least take a good breakfast and when it is lunch we make sure that we take our lunch so that at least we can have the mm. energy to continue running around. But the majority of the back on the feet and everything is going on. I see. Thank you very much for that information. Mohamed Mutaka Mubarak is Majority Chief Whip. Now, to education. The Board of the National Service Scheme has described a speculative report in the media about upper and uh, wrongdoing at the scheme. It follows reports about the arrest of some district directors said to have embezzled nearly 8 million Ghana cities and funds supposedly paid to non-existent uh, national service personnel. Speaking exclusively to join News as Justice Force and the board chair, Gipti Mahama Bira stated, though they are aware of the investigations by the BNI, they are yet to be furnished with details as the investigations are still ongoing. The reports in the Daily Graphic suggest about 7.9 million Ghana CDs was paid out to ghost personnel in a month, with 20 district directors currently being questioned by the BNI. Um, the numbers are too great, and I would have said that, I mean, I'm saying that maybe I should have had privy to these things before it's come out, because there are certain issues that have to be ironed out. We have service personnel who are down in the south here who did not go up to where they were posted to go and collect their monies. And in fact, it will, I'm sure you are aware, it will interest you to know that they had even written that they wanted to go on the streets to domestic so that they could collect their allowance because they were given, I think, three days to be able to report to their places of work to collect their numbers a week, but they couldn't do that. So I, I, I'm quite shocked and everybody is stunned by the revelations. She however assured officials found culpable will not be shielded. If, I'm, if the board is giving the full report by OMIS, I know in the report there will be some recommendations, there will be some rules that the board will be. If the report is made 
um, you know, if we are giving the report, we'll look at it and answer whatever it is. Meanwhile, a statement issued by the governing board has stated it is in full support of the ongoing investigation by the BNI into its activities. Justice Forces report for Joy News. We'll talk about this in a bit. In the meantime, Chief Executive Officer of Stratcom Africa, Esther Ambakoba, has called for a collaborative effort from government and other relevant stakeholders to ensure the streetism in Ghana is curbed. Speaking after the launch of the Special Attention Project in Accra on Thursday, she further highlighted the need for a holistic approach in dealing with the problem since failure to do so could create an avenue for social misfits. In an interview with Joy News after the launch of the campaign, CEO of Stratcom Africa, Esther Koba, called on all to see the need for a collaborative effort in solving the problem of streetism as a pressing responsibility. According to her, failure in executing this responsibility could be seen as a contribution to the perpetration of streetism. It's important that everybody in society sees this as a responsibility because we saw in the play that they did that they learn some things on the streets, behaviors, deviant behaviors, that we, they become the people that snatch your bags on the street. They become the people that abuse drugs and sometimes get into actions that are not uh, beneficial for society. So by not contributing to resolving this issue, we are contributing to the perpetuation of streetism and with all its attendant vices. She noted the problem has been aggravated by the actions and inactions of parents as well as school authorities. When we see children on the street, it is not always the fact that they want to be on the street. They are there because they have been driven there by a home situation or by a school situation. This is a program that has to be resolved holistically. So every body in the society, every sector of our nation has to play a role. So government has a role, private sector has a role, communities have roles, traditional leaders, parents, teachers, individuals, all of us have a role. The Special Attention Project campaign on streetism is aimed at helping children with learning difficulties as well as preventing children from dropping out of school. Let's uh, turn attention back to alleged rot at the National Service Scheme and we understand the BNI has launched an investigation into the matter. Let's get perspective on this from Professor Kwesi Yanka, his president for Central University College. He's also an educationist. Thank you very much for your time here, Prof. Thank you so much. Prof, how do you feel about this uh, alleged wrongdoing in the financial department of the National Service Scheme? Yeah, I also read the news, uh, was it yesterday and part of today, and I'm, I'm really outraged and flabbergasted because I would list um, associate corruption with uh, para educational institutions like the, the National Service that uh, normally assigns uh, placement to, to graduates who, are, who have just finished mm. school. And uh, I, was, I was very shocked and I, I, I wish the information would formally come out, uh, you know, beyond beyond allegations. Uh, but I'm propagated because corruption now appears to be so endemic and widespread. Nobody seems to be interested be interested in tracking down offenders. Nobody is interested in implementing uh, recommendations and decisions of uh, committees found out to investigate for whether from SRAD, National Service, government, uh, World Cup, uh, we, are, we, we, we seem to be helpless. And I think as a society, we ought to sit up and demonstrate that we are embarrassed you know, by what is happening. But nobody appears to be embarrassed. We are not sufficiently outraged 
as a society. Uh, that is my worry. People prefer or steal more money than steal goats mm. and chicken, and they are imprisoned in Ghana here. You For many, corrupt. many years. Yes, over the years, uh, the, the committee set up uh, findings that anybody interested in, even prosecuted. We do it with impunity. Mm. And I think it's an embarrassment on us as a, as mm. a nation, particularly as a para-educational institution at the National Service. I, 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 even at the National uh, Office of the National Service uh, the National Service Scheme, allegations have been brought against national executives, including uh, the boss of the National Service uh, scheme and and investigations have been launched into all of these people. Is it okay to have these people still at post while uh, investigations go on? That is the thing. I, I I think there should be immediate interdiction, you know, while investigations continue. Otherwise, they can very easily obstruct uh, processes of investigation. Um, but but it looks like we have swum in corruption for too long and for so long, we don't really seem to care and. Nobody is even interested in interdicting. We are all looking on. Mm. And, and that, that's the embarrassment, particularly the role that the service, that office plays in uh, instilling discipline um, in, in the graduates who are going to be assigned uh, to various places of, uh, of the country. Mm. It is embarrassing, I must say, to, to the unit. And they probably would like to go several years back and determine the extent to which it has, it has happened. Mm. And also, even going to the extent of uh, trying to bribe, you know, the BNI that is investigating it, we are obstructing justice mm. by by bribery. And I, I think we should take it very very seriously and act mm. uh, on this. Uh, in, in indeed, uh, Prof. I'm glad you could join us, Professor Chrissy Ianka, president of the Central University thank College. You. Right. Thank you too. Th thank you too, Prof. Now, the Association of Ghana Industry says. It will soon be setting up a program to create competency-based units in tertiary institutions to teach students basic skills required in industry. Speaking at an Imani Occupy Ghana Forum on Education, the association's president said the action has become necessary since the educational sector has over the years failed to produce the skilled manpower needed by the country's industries. Speaking on the link between industry, curriculum development, and growth, President of the Association of Ghana Industries, James Asari Ejei, bemoaned the poor state of the country's educational sector with specific emphasis on the quality of graduates churned out by the universities. He added, though the businesses with the association have enough vacancies to help reduce the current levels of unemployment, most applicants lack the requisite skills. Now, the educational system should produce job creators and not job seekers. Most of them, and uh, I'm sorry to say that, but you realize that a lot of the people come out and then they are just, they just do what they are taught to do without being creative. At least try to challenge the status quo. Like I did indicate, we're setting up a program whereby we can have a link with the higher institutions and then automatically uh, those who are to go on internship are posted directly to even the SMEs and then get a fund so that if these SMEs, maybe they are so too small to be able to support them I and mean, give them some allowances, we have these funds that can uh, really help them. And once we do that, they learn from the basis and be able also, as they finish, if it's a three-year, four-year program, by the time they finish, they also have the idea of becoming job creators, not only wanting to have uh, this in employment. We have a lot of vacancies in our companies. We're not having the requisite, the people with the requisite uh, sort of skills to really fill these vacancies. Then we also hear always that there are so many graduates who are unemployed. They say there are no jobs for them. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone can help me. I mean, to just get an answer for this so that as I go here, I can tell them. Because they keep on asking me, I've not been able to answer that. Former Education Minister Elizabeth Ohine, however, blamed the challenges faced by the country's educational sector on poor policies by government and called on the Ghana Education Service to set up better management structures to help rectify the situation. We should have better management structures and that the inspection of schools should be an independent institution. 
I do not understand why my friends of the GEF have so attached to this idea that the inspectorate should be under them. I don't understand it. And I do not understand why they are reluctant for us to decentralize the schools and put them under the control and of their communities and the assemblies. That is what we should do. There is too much money being wasted. And if the communities are in charge, they will make sure that children, uh, the teachers come to school. Yes. At the moment, they are, prote they are protecting themselves. Yes. It's a cartel, and it shouldn't go on. Nihal, the GES says he has taken a number of steps to help address the many challenges faced by the sector. The Imani Occupy Ghana Forum on Education was to highlight and make recommendations on the numerous challenges confronting the country's education sector. You're watching news today. There's more to come. Please don't go away.